If you love cooking, a good knife is your best friend in the kitchen. We've been through a lot of good times together. As a mom and a chef, I do a lot of slicing and dicing. Choosing the right knife helps me to work faster and more efficiently when I'm preparing a meal. Today, I'm gonna to share with you my favorite knives to work with and what I use them for. The three types of knives that most home cooks find useful are, number one, a chef knife, number two, a serrated knife, and number three, a paring knife. This is what's known as the big three. First, let's talk about the different types of chef knives that are available. Chef knives from Germany and France typically have an eight to 10 inch blade. Japanese knives have blades that are closer to six or seven inches, and the blade is thinner and lighter. Another difference between Western knives versus Japanese knives is that Western knives have curved blades, whereas Japanese knives, such as Sentoku knives, have a straight edge. There are many different types of Japanese knives. I own a Sentoku knife, as well as a Nakiri knife. A Sentoku knife is a nice multi-purpose chef knife, which is great for cutting vegetables, fish, or meat. A Nakiri knife has a thin rectangular blade and it's ideal for vegetable chopping. In fact, the name Nakiri is translated as knife for cutting greens. I find that a chef knife works well for the majority of my cutting tasks. I really enjoy working with my Japanese knives. They're lightweight, so they don't tire my wrist and hand as easily. I also own a German-made Messermeister knife, which has a nice eight inch blade and a super comfortable olive wood handle. This is good for cutting through hard winter squash or other tough jobs where I might be afraid to chip my more delicate Japanese knives. If you're trying to choose between either a Western knife or Japanese knife, it comes down to personal preference. You wanna select a knife that's comfortable to hold, feels like the right weight for you, and has a good sharp blade. Serrated knives are also known as bread knives. The blade is seven to 10 inches. They're great for slicing through foods that are hard on the outside, but soft on the inside, like a crusty loaf of bread or a whole pineapple. They're also useful for slicing through cakes and tomatoes. One thing to keep in mind about serrated knives is that they can't be sharpened, so you may have to eventually replace it if you use it a lot. Therefore, I don't recommend spending too much on a serrated knife. They can range between $7 and $50. You should be able to get a decent serrated knife for somewhere around $25. I'll link to a good one in the description. A paring knife is useful for small detailed jobs that require control of your blade. The blade is between three and four inches. I like to use a paring knife to trim the bottom from a head of lettuce and for destemming strawberries. Choose a paring knife that has a comfortable handle so that you can keep a good grip on it. Price wise, paring knives range between $6 and $30. I often use a five inch utility knife like this. This knife has a longer blade than a paring knife, and it's great for small slicing, like removing broccoli or cauliflower florets, or slicing an apple. It's nice to use this over a regular knife sometimes, as there's less cleanup involved. Of course, there are other types of useful kitchen knives, such as a cleaver, which is used for prepping vegetables and working with meats. A boning knife could also come in handy to break down a cooked whole chicken, or cut into a roasted turkey. Kids' knives are great to give children an opportunity to work with you in the kitchen. They're safe because they're just serrated and they can't actually cut themselves using these knives. They're great for soft fruits like slicing through strawberries or bananas. Another consideration when it comes to kitchen knives is storage. Just like choosing the right knife, this is a personal preference. Some options include storing knives in a kitchen drawer or attaching them to a magnetic strip. A drawer or knife block or a countertop knife block. If transporting your knife, I always recommend covering it with a protective sheath for safety. Also, be sure to keep your knives sharp. A sharp knife is a safe knife. You can have them professionally sharpened once or twice a year, or learn how to use a whetstone and do it yourself at home. I have an instructional video about that and I'll link it below. 
Whatever knife you end up choosing, I hope you found this video helpful in learning all about kitchen knives and their uses. Let me know in the comments what your favorite knife is. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!